Hi everyone, my name is Billy Quach. I study electrical engineering and my partner's name is Samuel Fernandez. He studies statistics. Today we'll be talking about drawings and the general guidelines provided by EWSA pertaining to drawings. Yeah, so the purpose of this presentation uh, is going to be to inform about EWB standards of CAD or drawings and of the significance of drawings to the travel teams in the community with a focus on the types of projects conducted in Mukitania and Los Sanchez. So on this presentation, a uh, quick outline of what we're going to be talking about is first we're going to be talking about the design related drawings and methods of producing them. Uh, then we'll shift over to the guideline, guidelines and recommended drawing sets for water supply and distribution projects. We will then talk about the import, importance of drawings to the community and to the travel teams. And lastly, we will transition between design and implementation. So before we begin, uh, we want to briefly talk about what kind of drawings we're going to talk about because drawings can encompass a lot of things. Uh, so we're not going to be talking about, you know, drawings with stick figures. Uh, instead, we're going to talk, be talking about design drawings, uh, which a lot of them show specifications such as like elevation data uh, and other useful data. And these drawings also show calculation. Uh, and why do these drawings matter? Uh, because they're used as a tool to inform and communicate. Uh, and we'll talk about this later, but uses a tool to inform and communicate to both teams in the community. I will talk about the main methods of producing drawings and in this presentation we'll talk about two main methods, sketching and um, computer-aided computer design. Uh, so to begin, sketching. Um, so sketching is done by hand on paper and recently you can also do it like on digital devices um, such as your tablet um, and your iPad and so on. Um, and uh, the pros of like of doing sketching is that it's a very fast means of producing drawings. Um, it's also very convenient for draw for drawing and designing while in the field. And um, our chapter has used this method in the past. Um, the cons of this is that it's very easy to miss small details like dimensions or orientations, and it's also very hard to update the same sketch. So now we're going to look at a few examples provided by the EWB USA. For the first example, we're going to look at the water supply project done in Honduras by the EWB CCNY chapter. So this here is a sketch of a dam, and if you look at it closely, you'll see that it's very detailed. You can see everything from the dimensioning to elevations to side views to top views, and um, this is a pretty good example of what a sketch should uh, should be uh, should look like. I'm also going to talk about the various applications of sketching in our chapter. Um, for the next examples, we're going to look at sketches done by the Mkutani team of the Harvard chapter and the Los Sanchez team of the Harvard chapter. And these are examples of operation and maintenance manuals um, written for communities that we've worked with. So here we have sketches done for operation and maintenance manuals. Um, by the by teams in the Harvard chapter. Um, the one on the left was done by the Mutani team and the one on the right was done by the Los Sanchez team. These are very good drawings because you can tell um, by just look at the pictures you can understand the motion that's being referred to in the text. Um, and um, and uh, as we will talk about later, one of the key things about sketching um, is making sure that you capture the actions in the pictures. We also use sketches to make construction sketches while in the field. Um, for the next example, we're going to look at a sketch done in August 2017 while in the Dominican Republic. It's a sketch of the plan view of a valve box. In this sketch, the various boxes which represent um, CMUs that have been aligned to make um, a rectangular structure. We also use sketches to sketch maps of the areas um, where we travel to. And for our next example, we're going to look at a sketch made of a community, of a map of a community in the Dominican Republic. So this is an example of a sketch made in one of the past trips um, 
but later on we'll be talking about the guidelines for making um, good sketches. Our second method of producing drawings is computer design. Um, this is done. One advantage of computer design is that you can make a very accurate presentation of what you want to build, and um, it's also a very neat way of producing um, drawings. Uh, think about the printed um, drawing sets and um, how clean they look. Um, one disadvantage is the fact that it takes time to make because it's an iterative process. So now we're going to look at the drawing guidelines provided by EWUSA and also I'm going to look at some sample um, recommended drawing sets still by EWB USA. Here is a quote that I really like about drawings and drawing sets and it reads, show what you're building, where you're building it, how it is put together, zoom in on your project through the drawing sets and uh, for the next slide I'm going to be showing you how what you mean exactly by these. Um, this quote. So um, everything should be clear labeled. Um, drawing set should go from general to specific, just as we talked about um, zooming out and then zooming in. Um, and then show what your project looks like from above, front, back, and side through plan and elevation views. And for water supply, uh, water supply projects, include a system map showing layouts of all the components. To show you what you mean exactly by that, we're going to use the example um, provided by EWSA um, of a structure built um, in Nicaragua um, by Cal Poly student chapter. So uh, in this first image, you can see the plan view um, of the, um, the structure. And um, if we move on to the next one, we'll see how we zoom in into uh, different components of uh, the structure. From the plan view, we come to the elevation views, just like we talked about, including all the different views of the structure. From the elevation views, we now come to the cross-section um, of the building. Um, and um, you'll notice that, like we talked about in the guideline, we're diving deeper into more detail. And lastly, in this last drawing sheet, you can see that we have the very specifics of the structure. Another guideline is having a scale and ensuring that you draw to scale. And um, in the advantage of printing it out, you should provide a graphic scale. And uh, it's very important to maintain consistency of units and your scale. To show you what you mean by this, we're going to look at an example by EWUSA. Um, this is the final design um, of the water supply project in Kenya, done by Hope College chapter. If you look at this drawing, at the very bottom left corner, you'll notice that there's a black and white scale, and this is what we refer to when you talk about having graphic scale in your drawing, in your drawing sheet. We should include landmarks and community features such as schools and meeting places in our drawings to help with orientation. Um, also, we should indicate the sources of our data, such as Google Earth or USGS. To show how landmarks can be included in um, drawing sets and uh, how data sources can be cited, um, we will use uh, the map distribution system app done by Bill Clooney. In this drawing set, you'll notice that there is one landmark and it's indicated on the left side of the drawing uh, sheet and um, it's, it reads Mapinduzi Primary School. At the top of this slide, you'll notice that there is a health dispensary and um, this landmark is very useful when it comes to like determining the location of the model system. And uh, for our last guideline, um, when making descriptive drawings such as operation and maintenance manuals, we should include pictures that capture actions. To show how we can use um, sketches and drawings to capture actions, we'll use the final design um, report done by Hope College on the water supply projects in Kenya. This is a very good drawing in that you can tell the direction in which you're supposed to move um, just by looking at the drawing at the top. 
So next up, we'll be talking about the importance of drawing to the team and the community. So first, we're going to talk about the importance of good drawings uh, as it pertains to a team. And my first bullet point here is pictures. A picture's worth a thousand words. And now this applies both to a team and the community, but it's just much easier to communicate a lot of times with a picture uh, because there's no ambiguity with what you're trying to communicate. Now, clear drawings and design of construction plan assures that everyone is on the same page, whether it comes to construction uh, and in every part of the implementation process. Uh, good drawings also makes it easier to ask questions. Uh, and again, a lot of times you might not know something like you might not know specifically what you're trying to refer to, but having a picture right there makes it easier so that everybody knows what you're referring to. Also, good drawings are great assessment tools. Uh, and here's a quote that I really like. Drawings can help record important information about community and project. Information such as elevation data. It can also record things such as landmarks and maps. Good drawings are especially helpful to those who haven't traveled before, just so they have the same information when you're working on the project outside of, outside of the community you're working on. So when you're working on it in the US, uh, good drawings can make it so that everyone has the same information and so that people who haven't traveled before know exactly where everything is. Uh, and lastly, it, is, it makes it much easier for translators. Uh, Many times, as good as a translator may be, uh, just having a picture there and communicating with pictures can, again, it, it makes it so that there's no ambiguity with what the translator is trying to convey. So this specific drawing was a drawing used by the Harvard chapter, the, the, the project in Los Sanchez, Dominican Republic. Uh, and this conveys drawings of the roads there. Uh, it was especially helpful while they were on the, uh, their assessment trip back in January 2018. Now this was drawn for the, this was drawn as the survey team was walking down these roads for the first time. Uh, and as you can see, it's a rough sketch, uh, but everything's pretty clearly labeled. Uh, and what you see, all those points are houses. Uh, and there's also important landmarks, like if there was a store in a corner, they would, it would be labeled. Uh, and again, how was this important to the team? It was important because back when we would have to refer to certain roads, uh, we would use this map, uh, and it would just make it easier uh, for the whole team to know where what specifically you were talking about. This next drawing was also helpful to the Los Sanchez projects in the Harvard chapter. Uh, and it's a construction plan of personal connections to each house of a water distribution system. Uh, and because there's a lot of those, there's, there was a lot of houses connected to this distribution system. It was used as a reference every single time we put those connections into the, into the houses. This, this specific drawing was used as a reference, uh, which is really helpful for the team. Now, everything I just said is also extremely helpful to the community. But there are also other things that are specifically helpful to the community that were not mentioned uh, previously. Uh, one of them is a drawing can help in training maintenance personnel. Uh, this can be uh, with explaining construction practice as well as illustrating operation and maintenance manuals. Also a drawing can help communicate to community what we want to accomplish. And I mentioned this briefly before when I was talking about how it helps translators. Uh, but a drawing can just make sure, uh, help assure that the community is on the same page as far as construction goes. And they can also help that assess that the information is correct that you have in these drawings. Uh, and there's this quote that I really like, uh, that a drawing is a concise way to depict and transmit a proposed solution for discussion with your partner communities and NGOs. So this is an example of a drawing that was helpful uh, to a community and the community that it was helpful to was the community in Los Sanchez, Dominican Republic. Uh, this specific drawing shows how to, it's an operation and maintenance manual on how to clean a water tank. And just things to note here is that there, whoever made this manual uh, decided to include very small details, which are very important. 
uh, and it's extremely easy to understand. Uh, in fact, like you don't even have to, although it's in Spanish and you might not understand Spanish, you can just look at the pictures and understand what they're trying to say. Uh, and so this is just an example of a drawing that was very helpful to the community. So the last thing we're going to talk about is this transition from design to implement implementation. Uh, a lot of times you design something and when you go and implement it, it doesn't, not everything falls in place like you wanted it to. For this section, we're going to look at a specific example uh, from the Los Angeles Tank Bath Box. Now the next couple of slides are just going to show pictures of what the design drawings look like for this tank valve box. So as you can see here, the tank valve box is going to be right next to the tank. So this is the as-built design drawing uh, of the tank valve box. And the main difference between this and the last and the previous design drawing is that this one is the tank bat box is longer and bigger than the previous one and that is because when we want to when we implemented the the previous one we realized that the tank bat box was too small for people to work inside uh, so when we got to the to the project to the implementation phase we had to sit down and design this uh, and this is the result So what do you do when you get to the implementation phase and the design that you had planned, you end up finding out that it's not going to work. Now these are just some tips of things to do uh, if and when that happens. So the first thing is plan for design to change and always have a backup. So maybe not necessarily have other design drawings because that can take a lot of time, you know, having a, a good uh, design drawing, but just in the back of your head, Know that if your plan A doesn't work, uh, you have a plan B. And so it just takes less time to think of a plan because you already have one. Now, when another important thing is when redesign designing in the field, take your time. Uh, it is much better to spend a day or half a day drawing, you know, specific details in this drawing than having to do a whole nother trip, having to come back and and do this. Uh, also, don't forget to draw to scale. And with this, have someone check your work so that everything looks to scale. Uh, have the design documents with you when, you when building and make as many copies as needed. And lastly, record the changes you make on the design documents so that they are easy to access and understand in the future. So thanks for listening to our presentation. Uh, here we have our sources and references.